Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. I got a lot of questions on... I actually got some questions on my last video talking about price action. So I want to make basically a price action part two video here going over in more depth and more detail on how to trade price action only. So if you're a little confused on the last video, then this is the video for you. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate it. And without further ado, let's dive into the video. Before I get too far in depth in this video, if you haven't watched the first video, I'll just link it up in the cards. And then if you have any questions, leave it in the comments down below of this video if you're still confused on anything. So what we're doing is we're trading price action only, which means we're trading with the price what the candles are giving us. We're not using any indicators because price action is more current and indicators are just more past tense. So what we're doing is we're starting with the top down analysis. So anytime you're trading price action, you have to start with the highest time frames and then work your way down. Um, I just I just started the daily chart. So if you're also unfamiliar, um, price is fractal. So that means that whatever happens on one time frame can happen on all time frames and br be broken down to the same. So when you're looking at the way price is trading on one time frame, you're looking for the same patterns on the lower time frames. It's all the same. It's just different time frames. Like right? obviously, higher time frames are going to be bigger moves, and lower time frames are going to be smaller moves. So, the first thing it's most important to know the direction of the highest time frame because that's how we can trade with a bias. So, on the daily chart, we want first want to be able to identify swing highs and swing lows. This is the first step to identifying whether you should be looking to go long or to go short intraday. At, just looking from left to right, if you just look, you ask yourself, is the trend up or is the trend down? Are we making higher lows and higher highs? Or are we making lower lows and lower highs? Very easy to see. We're making higher lows and higher highs. Now, what people get, tend to get confused is how to identify a swing low or a swing high. So this is a swing low because the candles to the left and the right have higher lows. That makes the one that's in the middle a swing low. Just like right here, this one will be where people get confused. This is another higher swing low. Not this candle, not this candle. Why? Because to the left of this candle, it's higher and to the right of this candle is higher. So all you're doing is you're identifying if we keep making higher lows or if we're making lower lows. And to do that, you look at the lowest candle you can see, and then you look to the right and the left, and you say, are the, are the candles um, higher than it? Yes, then that's the swing low. Then, then you go, and you just keep looking to the right until you see that again. Well, you see that again right here. Is this a higher swing low? Yes, it is. Then you keep going until you see that again, right? This These lows are equal, so you can't really identify this as a swing low. Then you see here, here, this one isn't because this one's lower. This one is because the one to the right is higher, the one to the left is higher. So this is another higher swing low, right? Then you keep going and you see there's a swing low here and then the swing low kind of wicked below this one, uh, but closed above, which means in my opinion that it's still uh, a higher swing low. Uh, we, wanna, we wanna see a close below a swing low to confirm that it potentially broke the sequence of higher swing lows. So now that we, it's very clear to see we keep making higher swing lows and higher highs. Then what we do is we go down to lower time frames to create a game plan on the day. So this whole process I just showed on the daily chart is just to allow us to decide if we should be only looking for longs or only looking for shorts. And in this case, we should be only looking for longs because you have to ask yourself the question. If we keep making higher swing lows and higher highs on the daily chart, then if we enter a position, where are we most likely to go? To another new high. So you're giving yourself a much greater than 50% chance just by doing this first step and, and identifying that, okay, I should only be looking for longs because clearly we are continuously seeking higher prices. And you, that already puts the odds in your favor. Like think of yourself as a casino, you just became the casino by looking at the higher time frame and deciding that, okay, there's this pull upwards. So let me only look for a position on a pullback to go long to target more highs. That's all this just did, very simple, but it can save you and, and give you an edge. This is already an edge, right? So now we know how to identify swing lows and swing highs. Now remember, you do this, this exact same thing with the swing lows, you see the same thing on the lower time frames as well. So let's just go ahead and look at a four hour chart, right? And we see the same thing. So on the four hour chart, it starts to get a little different, a little messier, right? Because now you see this is a swing low, we pushed up, we made a swing low, we kind of wicked below, but we held, uh, pushed up, 
took out highs, sold off, made a swing low, and then sold off more and made a lower swing low here. But then we pushed up, pulled back, made a higher swing low here, and then boom, got this push up to take out the high to the left, confirming more bullishness. Right, I'm just showing you that you're looking for the exact same thing on all time frames. Then we go down to the one hour chart and we'll, we'll get to trade soon, very soon. I just wanna make sure that this is clear and how to identify swing lows and swing highs. So again, this is a swing low because there's a higher price to the a higher low to the left and a higher low to the right. We pushed up, this became another higher swing low because this is a higher low to the left, this is a higher low to the right. And then we came up here, sold off, made another higher swing low, and then pushed up higher. So now that we can see all this, we're now going to see how could we have taken trades today, right? So if we go down to the five minute chart, I trade on the five minute and the one minute for my entries, and you go back to the, the beginning of the day and you say, okay, we have already decided that we're most likely going to go higher because the daily chart has a, a bias for higher prices. Now, this is where it could get confusing, but know this, if on the lower time frame, if we sweep, it's called a sweep, if we take out an important low on low time frames, not on the higher time frames, and then push and create a bullish market structure on the lower time frames, we're likely to seek a higher liquidity price, meaning that we're li likely to take out a high. We took out a low on the low time frame, but we still stayed and respected the higher time frame bullish bias. So then on the lower time frame, once we've taken out people's stops, if we go back to now showing bullish market structure, that's when you can have more confidence in entering along. So just write that down and you might have to repeat that a few times. Again, all this means, I'll give you an example. So you see the overnight trading right here is midnight. We did this, all this chopping. We took out a high, right? Chop, 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 chop. Pre-market, just before the market opened, boom, we took out all the lows to the left. So all liquidity has been taken. But at 8 a.m., if I go back to the the, the four-hour chart, and if you go look, or we'll go, to, we'll go to the one-hour chart. If you go to the one-hour chart and you go look back at what happened at 8 a.m., 8 a.m., we were trading right here. Would you say that we are bearish on this time frame? No, no, you're not because there's a fair value gap to the left, a bullish fair value gap, and you have all this. I would personally wanna see us get below this low to even think about going for shorts. So on the five minute, we look bearish, but on the one hour and then on the daily also, if you just see where we were at, at like at this 8 a.m. here, we were at 20,200. So 20,200 today would be right here. So you see where I am right here, we were trading right where my mouse is here at 20,200. Would you be wanting to short right there? No, because the, the day before we had this daily close and this daily strong engulfing close assumes that you're only going to go higher and you're likely to take out the highs because of this market structure. This is very bullish. This close rate, very bullish. You would think, okay, where are we going to go next? We're going to take out this high to the left. So that's why I marked up the all time highs because we got this daily bullish engulfing close on Tuesday. And I assumed that the next target would be this high if we were to push higher. I had another target at the 290 uh, for other reasons. So now if you go back to this, again, we said if we push down and we take out a low and then go bullish, right? How do we define market structure? A bullish market structure is when we were making lower highs and lower lows like this. We were going down, we made a low, then we made a lower high, then we made a lower low, then we pushed up, and we made a low, but then we came down and we made a higher low, and then boom, a higher high. So now we can start to put things together. Okay, so we were bearish on low time frame. On the high time frame of the daily chart, we know we're most likely going to go, I, I label it here, this is the high, 20,369. We're most likely gonna go there, but I had this 290 marked out here. I'll just drag 286. This is the overnight highs. We're most likely to go to the all-time high, first target being the overnight highs, because we shook out people, we took out low time frame lows, and then market structure went from 
lower highs and lower lows to a now higher higher low and then boom big engulfing at, on the 9:30 candle on the 5 confirming a bullish market structure shifting uh, bullish so if the high time frame is bullish and now the low time frame went from bearish to bullish you ask yourself where is the next target so instantly i knew the first target once this candle closed this first target would be this 20,285 uh, and the higher time frame target is the 20,369 Okay, so then you ask yourself, how can I get an entry? And this is where the one minute chart comes in handy. So if we go back to, uh, we just look at the one minute chart. Um, all these drawings are just little, uh, they're fair value gaps. It's areas where price is likely to retrace into uh, before going higher. So uh, this was 10 a.m. news here. So it took out those highs. Let's say we couldn't have gotten an entry there. Um, there's, there's lots of areas where we could potentially get an entry to target this, but there was nothing I liked yet until we got to uh, this right here, until we got to about 1032. Now, reason why is because we made this high and then we had a bullish engulfing close uh, into these, these highs. And whenever we get a, a candle close in the highs, we're likely to cover the entire wick. So what I had to do was wait and watch on the one minute chart for some fair value gaps. And I call them, uh, I don't call them, they're called the fair value gap inversions. So all fair value gap is, is basically a space where price went so fast that it didn't retrace into. And if price ever retraces into it and then closes back out of it, then it can confirm that we're going to seek higher prices. So I knew we were bullish in the five minute and you we were bullish on the daily. So we're only going to go higher. I had this high, this wick high, create this wick. Then I had this 10, 10, five minute candle calls bullish engulfing. I can't get an entry there, but I knew there was a very, very high probability that after this 10, 10 candle closed, we would take out this weak high because when price is in momentum and price is strong, reaching to higher prices, if we get a, a bullish engulfing that closes on the wick, then we're likely to fill that wick. But I first needed to wait for a proper entry for a good risk reward ratio. So what did I do? I just watched to see if we got a pullback because we left behind these one minute fair value gaps. I had this one drawn out. So if we were traced into it and then closed above, then I was going to go long, right? But as we sold off, we swept the low. NQ was a lot stronger than ES. That gave me another confluence to focus on the NQ long instead of ES. Then we also left a one minute fair value gap on the downside. So I had this fair value gap here. If we closed above here, I knew we were good to long. And then I had this one. If we inversed this one minute fair value gap, then in my eyes, we would target the next five minute high uh, for liquidity. Uh, reason being is because these are areas of strength. So if let's say if we were bearish, we would want price to wick like this candle wick into it and then close back down below to seek lower prices. But since we were bullish on the daily, since we were bullish on the five minutes, since we were bullish on every other time frame with a objective after sweeping some lows in the pre-market, all this combined gave me confidence that if we ever had a pullback and we reversed a low time frame fair value gap, we could enter in and target new highs because that's our bias and that's where we're likely to go. So that's exactly what happened. Uh, this is the fair value gap here from about 20,267 to about 20,262. Once we got a one minute candle close above it, uh, entered long and then put the stop below the most important swing low to the left. And that just happened to be 24 point stop. Target was new high of day at about uh, 25 points. So I then got even more confident once we had uh, this candle close. Yeah. Once we had this candle close, I got more confident. Why? Because we also then closed above this one minute fair value gap. So we inversed this one minute fair value gap and then we also confirmed this fair value gap. Those two combined, I kind of knew we were most likely off to the races and we're gonna take out this high next. And you can see from price, we just did that just that. And then we went even further and I didn't take any more trade, didn't have any more runners on, but we got the 25 points here, the one to one R. And then you can see uh, actually, I'll put on the five minute chart also just so you can see um, what it looked like. So the entry was at 267. The target was the uh, highs to the left and then stop loss lows to the left. So that's that's what it looked like on the five minute chart. And then you can see what happened, right? We took out the highs, took out all the highs, and then we literally just trended up into the all time highs. Because again, if we go back to the daily chart, you just have to ask yourself, where are we likely to go next? when you get a daily bar close like this, right? 
you know we're bullish. We get this sell-off. We have this wick right here. After this sell-off, we push up and get rejected. So then you think we're going down, but then we get a higher swing low and then an engulfing. That right there, and not on top of that, the engulfing is closing above the candle body. Nine, like eight times out of 10, nine times out of 10, when you get a, a bullish engulfing candle that closes above a body and on a wick, if you're with the overall higher time frame bias, it's going to feel that wick. On top of that, NQ was stronger in the day. So there was just so much confluence for the first trade. And then I had high conviction in the all time high, but I was happy with my trade here and I called it a day. So this is just a really in depth analysis on how I would be looking for a trade every single day, right? So right now, if we were good to look tomorrow and if we had a, a day like this, I'd basically be watching to see if we could get a pullback early on in the day tomorrow. And I would basically do the same thing. I would put a line above the all-time highs and just know that, hey, the all-time high is basically a magnet because on the on the high time frame, we're bullish. And then if you on the day, if you look at the indexes and you see if NASDAQ is the strongest on the day, then you can have a higher, uh, you can have a stronger assumption that if we were to push up out of all the indices, NASDAQ would be the one that took out its all-time high. If it was weak on the day, then you wouldn't have as much confidence and you would focus on one of the indices that are stronger or you would just shoot for lower lower take profits. You wouldn't probably target the all-time high. You'd be targeting some lower time frame liquidity or swing high instead of the all-time high because you know uh, it's weaker on the day. So the, one of the other indices could take out their high, NQ could reject their high, and then you get stopped out if you're focused on longs because that's all we need to be doing at this point. When you look at the daily, the weekly, the four-hour time frames, you can only assume that we're going to go higher in price. So that was a very long explanation on how to do a top down analysis and how to trade price action only, only using candles, using fair value gaps, and just seeing that, you know, if we're stronger on one indice, then use that one to take longs. If the high time frame is, is bullish, very clearly bullish, only focus on longs. When you get a setup on the high time frame like this yesterday, yesterday was giving us a layup to go long to take our highs because this candle close just gives you the hint that the next day we're very likely going to take out the all time high. On top of that, it helped a lot that we had a bearish market structure early on in the day, making lower lows and lower highs, sweeping some low time frame liquidity, and then shifting market structure back to bullish by creating higher highs and higher lows on that five minute chart. That's when we look down to the one minute chart for a pullback into some fair value gaps and inverse those fair value gaps on the one minute chart for an entry so we can get a good risk reward ratio. Uh, of at least one R, and that's all I trade, right? I don't, I don't take any entry if I can't get at least one R. Uh, most of my trades are up 1.5, and then some are one. Now, let me know in the comments down below if this is confusing. You can do this on every single day. It's repeatable, it happens every single day, but the key is to first focus on the bias, and then also focus on whichever ind index is strongest on the day. It helps even more if you're bullish and you see a sweep of liquidity to the downside before market structure then just recently shifts back to bullish on the low time frame that's when you're most primed to get in a long because we just swept the low, high time frame is bullish, low time frame is just switching back to bullish. That's the highest odds of you getting a good push to the upside um, instead of getting in late like now where we've been bullish on the low time frame for a long time, all day essentially. So if you're expecting more new highs, like you're mostly late, late, most likely late to the party and you have a higher probability of, of getting stopped out. Hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate it. It really lets me know that you, you like these kind of videos and I can make more of them. Subscribe for more videos just like this. I post two videos a week helping you become a more consistently profitable trader. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.